What is up everybody, it's Jamie, welcome back to the channel. So for today's video, we're gonna go through what's on my iPhone. Now, I've been using my Sierra Blue iPhone 13 Pro since it came out a few months ago, and I thought it'd be fun to just go through some of the apps that I use more regularly, and some that I think are a little bit more interesting, and give my take on why I use these apps, and why maybe it could be something that'd be beneficial for you. This video is being brought to you by Casetify. I've been using Casetify cases ever since I had a bad experience with the Apple leather case back in the iPhone 12 Pro. So I've been using, most recently, this really cool clear and um, they call it the Love in Tokyo print case. So it has a lot of interesting action going on on the back of the case, but then it's also clear at the same time. So my iPhone 13 is the Sierra Blue. And so I really like the fact that I can have just a really cool and unique design on the back of the case while also being able to have the nice like sierra blue color coming through in different aspects of the case itself but with Casetify cases as well as all their packaging they have a huge movement towards sustainability so all their packaging is 100 percent compostable their cases are also comprised of 60 percent um, recycled as well as plant-based materials another thing i really love about the Casetify cases is their protection so I've always wanted a case that offered good drop protection, but I always would have to sacrifice the bulkiness. So Case Device has been able to address that by keeping the form factor pretty slim while giving up to 9.8 feet of drop protection with their Ultra Impact case. And lastly, Caseify includes a antimicrobial coating on their cases that will kill 99% of bacteria. So if you happen to be looking for a case for yourself, you can use the link below and get 15% off your order. So I'm just gonna jump into it. I'm gonna open up my phone and just really casually and on the fly, just start running through what I use more frequently to start like, like everyone else. Yes, I use Instagram, um, I have YouTube on here as well. Traditionally, I'm not really watching YouTube or any of the other entertainment apps that I have. So YouTube, Netflix, HBO Max, Disney Plus, Hulu, all of those things. I really don't like watching on my phone. I have the apps on my phone, but for the most part, I use an iPad if I'm ever looking to um, watch anything like that on, on a mobile device. But so let's kind of steer clear from those standard applications and let's look at some things that I think are a little bit potentially different or, or maybe unique. So first off from a music application standpoint, not to say that this is unique by any means, but I do use Apple Music um, mainly because it's what I've, what I've always used. I think not necessarily what I've always used because it's only been out for a little while, but um, I've tried Spotify. I like the user interface, I think a little bit more on Apple Music. And now it's also included in my, in my Verizon um, cellular package. So I, I get it for free. So, well, technically for free, I pay for it, but it comes included, so might as well use it. But additionally, one thing that I find that I use a lot me, not a lot more, but for the most part, I'm using the music on my phone, whether what, typically when I'm at the gym or when I'm running. And I do like Apple Music in certain instances, but I find that I use the free version of SoundCloud much more often. So music quality isn't really like a huge thing for me, but I find that I get more energized in my workouts when I'm listening to like live DJ sets and it's like continuous. So I don't know how it actually works. I think that people just record and then they put, then they put them on SoundCloud. And so I'll just search for live DJ sets. They run all the way through. So you don't have like tracks or anything like that. So free version of SoundCloud, I think is, is clutch. I don't know what happens if you pay for SoundCloud. Um, I don't really have many instances in which there's like ads or anything that like that pop up. Typically if I find like a, uh, a set or something that I wanna listen to, just hit play, it runs all the way through, no commercials. So that's something that I find to be 
you know, very, very helpful for me um, just for like running and, and gym situations. And then, so let's go a little bit further. So I use all like, I do all um, finance stuff on here. So all my banking apps are on here. Um, one thing that I will say is that I am a huge proponent of Google Maps. I don't even really know where Apple Maps is on my phone. I don't think I deleted it, but um, I probably just buried it in a section that I don't really go to all that often. I typically, I like to categorize my applications into different sections. Ones that I use more often, I'll just have an actual the app for it, um, not, in, not in a category because I'm going to be accessing it more often. But 100% prefer Google Maps over Apple Maps. I, I find the Apple Maps interface and everything about it to just be very, very clunky. I know that they've done some improvements, so maybe it's gotten better, but still, I think that as they're improving Apple Maps, Google Maps is continually getting better and that separation is just always gonna be greater. Um, in terms of, I have, I'm always, I, I'm always looking on Redfin and Zillow at houses. I utilize OfferUp. Um, I hate just throwing things away. I think it's better to try to, no matter how big or how small it is, to see if there's someone else that can utilize it. And so I like putting things on, on OfferUp. I find the experience with it to be, to be very pleasant. It's nice to not use Craigslist or anything like that anymore. In terms of like productivity, um, one application that I use very often for work and other things is Notability. I have it on both my iPhone and, and on my iPad, and I use that very, very often. So I've gotten rid of having um, a bunch of legal pads around with notes on it. Another thing that I use um, every single day because I cannot sleep without it is I purchased the Sleep Fan app. I probably bought it like at this point, maybe 10 years ago, I used to always have an actual fan, physical fan that I would run so I can fall asleep to that white noise. And then I just found it to be very cumbersome and unnecessary. So one application that I guess I kind of use on a daily basis is the Tesla app. So I ordered a new Tesla Model X back in July and I'm still waiting for delivery. I'm still waiting for a VIN and so I will like a crazy person, open the app, you know, multiple times a day just to see if I've been allocated a VIN or anything like that, which I have not. I'm assuming I've, I've never owned a Tesla before, so I am assuming that once I do get the car, I'll be using the application a lot more often for much more useful things as opposed to just getting disappointed. Some other applications that I use, I prefer the Chrome browser much more than Safari. I don't even know where Safari is on my phone. I use Gmail as my email client. I do not use the Apple Mail um, application. Another thing from a fitness perspective, I don't have an Apple Watch. I've tried an Apple Watch on a few different occasions. I just never really got into it. Um, one thing that I do prefer is I use the Map My Run application. So whenever I do run outside, I like to use Map My Run for um, just my mapping and, and pacing and, and, and whatnot. I've tried the Nike Run Club app. I don't know, for whatever reason, I've just preferred the Map My Run much better. As I'm going through like my different applications, I'm realizing that like a lot of the stuff that I have on here is actually travel related. Before the pandemic, I traveled a decent amount for, for work and, and a little bit for personal as well. And so there's just a whole chunk of applications that are not being used at all because they're all travel related, whether they're different airlines, um, Ubers, Lyfts, none of that stuff. I've, I've really been using all that much anymore. Okay, so key takeaway that I'm having in real time as I'm doing this video is I really don't use my phone as much as I probably should be. I think that I'm basically using it the same way I could use any basic phone. I will say that from an application standpoint, like I'm using all the same thing that everyone else is, but I will say a couple of things to check out. So check out Notability if you are looking for a note-taking app, as well as if you're looking for music and you don't want to pay for it and you think it could be interesting listening to live DJ sets in pretty terrible quality, 
look at SoundCloud. I think that's very interesting. And then if you do ever need like white noise in the background and a fan or something like that in that same realm could be helpful, I think that you should check out, it should literally just call it Sleep Fan. And there's different fans, different type of ambient noise you could have in there. It's very basic, but it's been super, super helpful for me. That's all I have for you today, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. Clearly, I need some suggestions for other applications that you think I should check out. So please comment below. Also, if you're looking to pick up a case from Casetify, use the link below to get 15% off your order. I will catch you on the next video.